You should notice that in addition to the tabs on the left hand side, there are also buttons that are running across your page here. There are additional options for navigating the course. I include them because there's a couple things that I want to, you to be able to click on on the left side here, but I can't change what those tabs say. So the syllabus is also duplicated. It's important, that's why I left it there. You'll see that there's a grades tab. That's also, I'm sorry, grades button. There's also a tab. It's important, I want you to be able to access that. And if you click on the syllabus or the grades button, it takes you to the same place as the syllabus or the grades tab. There's also an option if you want to email me. If you click on it, it will redirect you to the Canvas inbox, and then you'll be able to send me a message directly. And then there's an option for help. So the college has resources to help you. So I would say there's lots of levels to getting help for this class. If it's technical nature of registering for classes or being able to log into Canvas, the college will help you with that. If you need resources like the library and tutoring, there's another section that the college can help you with that. If you need help with the content, if you need Photoshop help, I can help you or Adobe can help you. And so I've compiled a little page here that is a help page that is resources for you to get help. But I would like to note that the resources for the college, I just copy and pasted that. If you come over here to the left hand side, there's a little help button and if you click on it, it has all the information that I gave you on that help page available. So if you're not in my class, let's say that you're taking Photoshop and Illustrator, but there's no help page in your Illustrator class, you can find it over here on the left hand side. There's also a link to the institutional syllabus and if you read my syllabus you would already know about the institutional syllabus. It has a link to it. But the new buttons that are important are the schedule button and the modules button. So the schedule button takes you to the schedule page and the semester schedule is mapped out. Um, basically you will have items due every Wednesday and every Saturday every week of the semester and I will help you to try to break up when you should be working on things. The Photoshop class is a lot of work and if you plan on logging in once a week for an hour this is not the class to take and it's especially not the class to take in the summer. But if you're interested in learning Photoshop in kind of a skills based way that you participate in a lecture and then you take a little quiz and then you practice your Photoshop skills and you wash, rinse and repeat and do that 23 times to learn an amazing number of things in Photoshop, then this might be the class for you. You'll notice that I kind of break it out into little chunks. So for the May 2019 summer term, you'll see that technically the first module, this blue module, it's not due until Saturday. But I'm saying you should work on it on Monday and Tuesday, and then you should be done and you should move on to the next thing. And color management, it's not technically due till Saturday, but I would say work on it on Wednesday and Thursday and then file creation and document setup, you should work on Friday and Saturday. And I'm trying to pace it out for you so it's not too much work. You can by all means work ahead. So the first five lessons, color management, file creation, document setup, intro to um, Adobe Bridge, camera raw, and workspaces, you could probably do it all in one setting in about four hours or less if you wanted to sit there for four hours and work on it. Um, if you have some prior knowledge, if this is your first computer class or your first computer graphics course and you don't know what file formats and resolution and pixels and things like that are, it's definitely going to take you longer. I would recommend if you are feeling good about doing getting started in Art 1200 and then you start working on color management and you still have some time, definitely work ahead. It's way better to work ahead and be ahead of the class than to fall behind. Students who fall behind in Art 1280 usually don't pass the class because we will continue to do lessons, two to three lessons per week, every week in the semester. So there's really no break to get caught up. The last button that you should click on is the modules tab or the modules button. This is where all of your coursework is. So you should definitely 100% never try to complete the course by looking at the coming up and the to-do feed over here on the right hand side. It will just show you things that are due. It will not show you all the resources available for you to be able to know how to do the things that are coming up that are due. If you go to the modules, so first if you go to the schedules button, you can see that we're working on getting started in Art 1280. It's the blue module. It's module one. So if we click on modules, we're dumped into Module 1, which is getting started in Art 1280, and everything you need to be successful with Module 1 is on this page. There's a little intro that explains what the module is. It goes through everything that you have to do. For Module 1, that means that you have these required activities. Read the syllabus, read this document, read that document, a lot of that getting started stuff. 
And then there are four required submissions, but you can't successfully complete the required submissions until after you click and read through all the links on the left hand side. Module two is our first real module. And so once you get to module two, this pattern is what will feel familiar throughout the semester. So the, again, there's a little intro that explains the modules, but then every module has multiple lessons. So module two has lessons one through lesson five. And every lesson is set up the same way. It has a series of learning outcomes. These are your goals. You should read through them, complete the material, and then read through them again. And then in order to successfully complete the lesson, you'll click on the lecture materials page. Every lesson will have a slideshow lecture. And we kind of wrote it like a book. So there's no textbook for Art 1280. We are adopting open educational resources, but we found the best way to have these open free resources is just to make them ourselves. And so you'll notice the slideshow, it's very wordy. It reads like a book. Then there's also a recorded lecture for every lesson. Um, you should watch the lessons because, or the lectures, because the, the slideshows are very matter of fact, but there's more stuff in the videos. The videos are going to go off on tangents and explain things in more detail than you would get if you just literally read the slide word for word. Once you complete the lecture by either reading the slideshow or watching the video, I recommend both, um, you will complete a skills practice and a knowledge test. The skills practice is a discussion post, so you will practice the things that are covered in the lesson, so you can read through what's required. And then down below, it's a discussion, and you'll reply back to the original, and you will attach images. Whatever the project is telling you to do, you'll attach the image, and you'll say, hey, I did this, and you'll post it. Not every single skills practice, but most of them will also have a series of demo videos that are included for the skills practice. But I will caution you, if you try to do the skills practices without watching the lecture and just watching the demo, you're not going to know all of the content that you need to complete the skills practice. It doesn't go, it doesn't do it step by step that you could follow. It just does a summary of the activity. And then when you get to your knowledge test, the knowledge test is a series of questions. So this one has 15 questions that come directly from the slideshow lecture. The questions are not meant to be difficult. They're just meant to highlight key information that would be important for that lesson. You get two attempts and they're not timed. If you don't watch or participate in the lecture, you're not going to know the answer to the knowledge test questions. And what I would highly recommend is you do not submit the knowledge test, knowledge test two times um, until you come and speak with me as your teacher. You can submit it the first time and see what questions you got wrong, and then you can go and try to find the answers to those questions. But if you visit me during office hours, I'll help you find the question, or I'll clarify why one answer is correct and your answer is not correct. And then when you submit it the second time, you should get 100%. So there's no reason that anyone shouldn't get 100% on those knowledge tests. They're more like knowledge quizzes, but we call them knowledge tests. Okay, please take a minute to click through module one just get an idea of what you will be working on. You don't have to do it just yet. There's a couple more things I want to talk about. And then click through module two so that you can see how a lesson is set up. So maybe just click through lesson one within module two. Once you feel comfortable with the organization or the navigational structure of module one and two, you can move on to the last video in the series where I'll wrap up my expectations for you this week in Art 1280.